Wow. Um, Dutch boxer named Rudy Lubbers, who represented his country, I believe, in the 68 Olympics in Tokyo. In Mexico, I think. In Mexico, I believe. Not Tokyo. Mexico. Actually fought Muhammad Ali and lost a 12-rounder in Indonesia, 1973. It's one of um, Ali's more obscure fights. It wasn't for the title. It wasn't for the title. Some people try to say it was for the title when they're telling this story. Ali came back in 71 when he fought Bonavina, Quarry, and then Frazier for the championship. And he lost that. That's his first loss of his career. And he didn't win his belts back until 75 when he knocked out George Foreman in Zaire. Yeah. So he wasn't even champion. Lubbers took Ali the full 12, you know, and that's his claim to fame. And he's recently been found living in a van, basically, in Bulgaria, homeless. Yeah, he's in a broken down van in Bulgaria. And... He's surviving freezing conditions without water, heating, or sanitary provisions. And I, I think they've only found out about this story because his wife got taken ill, probably to the cold temperatures she's having to survive through and the antiquated hygiene and etc. etc. A crowdfunding campaign raised 12,000 euros for him. And I want to tread carefully to say that, you know, he's um, mentally ill. But. He said he's not sure if he can live in standard housing or a flat or something like that. He said he's more a traveller or a camper. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, who are thought to have gone mad because they want to go off the grid. But, you know, in fact, you know, you could argue the insanity is being boxed in in some of um, the conditions that we live in the city and take as normal. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. And then it just dawned on me that I've never actually watched a fight. I've watched a whole load of Ali fights. I've never actually watched this fight. I've seen a few clips. Now, there's a couple of black and white recordings online. There is a colour clip, which is a nice clear clip. But it's only a few minutes. And it would have been nice to have seen the whole fight in that. But, you know, I had a blurred black and white copy. Ali didn't look amazing. He didn't look amazing. It was in Indonesia. It was very hot. The temperature was in the high 70s. And the humidity was even higher according to Howard Cosser. Ali barely threw the right throughout the fight. He had just lost to um, Ken Norton. Cosser was asserting that he may have injured it in the Norton fight. And apparently Ali had a calcium deposit in his right hand. Ferdy Pacheco wasn't there. The fight doctor used to travel with Ali. He wasn't there in Indonesia. They recorded the fight earlier. And I believe um, Howard Cosser just commentated on it later. So they admitted round four from the broadcast because it was a little repetitive. And they um, admitted rounds nine and ten as well. Ali predicted he'll knock out Lubas in five, but he never managed to do that. They did show Lubas' wife at the time before the seventh round. I'm not sure if that's his same wife today who took ill in the van. Ali upped the pace in the eighth round, throwing a lot of shots. But um, he never came close to stopping Lubbers. Lubbers landed a few shots, but most of them were blocked in the gloves and he missed a lot. But he stuck in there doggedly. Ali started to throw the right quite frequently in the 12th. And he's throwing these strange kind of combinations. It was almost a sparring session. He's throwing these combinations, these uppercuts he was pulling up in combination. Arm punches. I've never seen him throw that, them kind of combinations before. And most of them weren't landing. It was... um. A sparring session in effect and Ali won behind a jab. He came forward when he wanted to and just popped the jab, popped the jab, popped the jab. And when he wanted to, he got on his toes and popped the jab and popped the jab some more. He weighed in 196, Rudy Lubbers, which wouldn't even make Cruiser today. Ali came in at 217. Lubbers was just okay. He wasn't even decent European level, to be honest. He wasn't. In that same year, 73, he lost to Joe Bugner. When he challenged for the European title on points over 15 in London. So no, he wasn't elite. He wasn't world class. He wasn't even European elite. But he was a hero in the Netherlands. And a lot of people who was around back then, they were shocked to see him living in these conditions today. Who was the best European fighter to challenge Muhammad Ali? Mm, maybe Joe Bugner. Took Ali the distance twice. Some may say Henry Cooper floored Ali pretty heavily. And yeah, I mean, that's one of Britain's highlight reel 
sporting moments. I think Carl Mildenberger has a case. The Southpaw. He was good. The German. But yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to do a follow-up story. They've done some documentary on him apparently on Rudy Lovers. And um, I'm not sure if it's going to be quite as simple as just moving him into regular housing. He doesn't seem like he wants to do that. I don't know how much of his homelessness was brought on by hard times. Or his reluctance to conform to regular housing and habitat. We wish him all the best. He's 73 years of age right now. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.